Three Sharpies and add my mushroom is a permanent blessing to your wife. Yeah. Now I see you'll never forget me. I don't think I'll ever forget you. Oh, I hope not any teachers ever forgotten you. So the governor presents a budget to Congress. They also sign or veto bills. And what special veto power does the governor of Texas have? Why not a veto? Veto part of it. Line item, veto. He can just take a part of your total budget. Number six. So, like, if you were reading something or listening to something. Okay. Is this where they can uh, they can't say no to the entire bill? They can be like, I don't like out this part of your law. It doesn't happen very often because usually they're in. Because usually a bill is not enough. But you know what? I found out like that they like make a law, but they'll like add things to the law that have nothing to do with that law. Because to get people to sign it, they'll, like, they'll be like, okay, you can't spend more than $100 on tires, and you also can't use paper towels on Thursdays. We, we talked about that last semester, but we lost it. I probably wasn't here. Probably not. I missed a lot of days last semester. Um, does also, every, Coach Ryle, what's up? does every state's governor have like the power to do the line item? No. Just I, I, I don't, I'm sure some others might. In every state, it's going to be structured pretty much three branches, and there's subtle differences, but a lot of them are similar. I'm not an expert in all of them, but you know, there's only like three states in the United States that uh, you, at the age of 12, if you have parents' permission, you can get married. Texas is one of those states. So. You can get married at 12. But there's a lot of stuff. You get parents. There's a lot of old stuff that's on there that they haven't ever. The governor can call out the National Guard. Yeah. It's like it's America's army. Why does everybody sell crap on the National Guard? I don't know. I guess no one's ever evading the National Guard. Like, who's going to try this? But then, why don't they evade? Because then it's not like we can do it ourselves, and it's kind of all we got going. That's why they're infiltrating us. Not armies coming in. Ukraine. No, I'll put emergencies here. Emergencies. Emergencies. The National Guard. They call it the National Guard. Um, about 10 years ago, they had huge fires out in Possum Kingdom. Burned up thousands of acres. National Guard came to help with that. They will help with tornadoes. They'll help with hurricanes. Um, recently, Governor Abbott has been using the National Guard where? When the riots last year, didn't they? I thought they had the Maybe like, so. But that was in Texas. That was like, the border. Yeah. But then, they, yeah, there was a civil border too. Now, yeah. the governor can do that. Is there some legal issues there? Moral issues. Because what border is it? Mexico. Mexico. It's a national border. So the federal government has control over that. But then you have the counties along the border that their sheriffs are having to deal with the problems that the border problem is doing. So the governor's having to deal with that. So the federal government isn't real happy that the Texas governor is using the National Guard, but in the governor's mind, the federal government's not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that's all we'll do there. It's like children watching. Um, yeah, exactly. Got to go. I'm like disgusted with how the world works. It's like, oh my god, and I doubled on the pizza. Who does the governor like? He's pretty cool. He likes us. But who does he like? Who does he like? George Washington. Okay, who's a, who is, was a what? He was a president. Who would be lieutenant governor? Who would he like? George Washington. Vice president. Class president. Many of the following students in the library They're are Luis more Del Didio, James Aiken, Morgan Mitchke, and Austin Iglesias. Well, they would never do it. Make sure you sure understand. Oh. 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 Now, based on what we learned yesterday, what's the difference? What's the major difference between the governor and the president? The president's everything, and the governor. Well, the government, like, proportionally, has way more power. Actually, our governor doesn't have power. He like completely stopped. 
He has some things, but what what does our governor not do that the president does do? That's what we wrote yesterday. Um, what did we write down yesterday? He can't elect two people. The governor does not pick their own people. Who picks the cabinet? We do. We do. So how do you think the lieutenant governor gets their gig? We we elect them. Someone runs for the lieutenant governor. So the lieutenant governor is elected. Who is the lieutenant governor? Uh, Dan Patrick. They are not a team. So what happens if the governor and the lieutenant governor like hate each other? Does that ever happen? Yeah, it probably has happened. happened. There's 50 states. The president and the vice president. Make sure you write this down. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. Can I borrow this blue pen? Sure. You know every cover. I do. Um, the vice president's pick. They are a team. They run together. Hmm. Lieutenant Governor, now we elect the governor. Dan Patrick is a Republican. If we elect a Republican governor, what are we probably going to elect? A Republican oh, Lieutenant Governor. It'd be pretty funny if we did it though. Now, this is, now I'm going to tell you a story <laughs> about that. There's Dan Patrick and there is um, Greg Abbott. They don't always see eye to eye. They are both Republicans, but. Right. They might, because they're not on exactly the same page, they might see things a little differently. I think that's kind of a dumb system, because I feel like if I wanted someone to run my government, I'd let him pick the people he ran it with. Because then you're like, because you know how inconvenient it probably is to run a government if you like, like, I don't know. Well, but it, like we said with the president, vice president, they used to pick, or they used to elect them. They have to compromise. They have to work together to get anything to get anything accomplished. But they don't. They do. Well, they do. Sometimes they fight. Sometimes they. But like in our big government, they have to, you know, work together to get stuff done. And yeah. Jump. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, when President Bush was first elected governor, it was in '96, and we were. God, you messed this up for me. Yeah. Um, there. Uh, we were in transition. 1876, we elected a Republican governor. We did not elect a Republican governor until 1976. Why was the South Democrat? Because used to the Democrats were more like they were conservative, and Republicans were liberal, and then it switched. But it was history too. Something happened. In the 1870s, 1860s. Oh, the Civil War. Civil War and Reconstruction. And the Gold Rush, right? Oh, even up in California. But the Republicans were in charge of Congress. They were over Reconstruction. So no one in the South was going to vote Republican ever because of Reconstruction. So for 100 years, Texas is Democratic. Then we elected a Republican governor. Then we elected a Democratic governor. And then the same Republican governor. Then the same Democratic governor. And then another Democratic governor. Then Governor Bush. And that's when Texas started to really become a Republican state. Because Bush was from Texas. Everybody yes. was like, that was like our mascot. Yes. The um, Bobby Bullets. And when he was governor, Bob Bullets was lieutenant governor. He was a Democrat. A long time Texas politician. Now, Texas Democrat is not like a New York Democrat or a California Democrat. More like a New York Republican. But they were Democrats. Well, at first, they butted heads. But after a while, President Bush ran for president. Bob Bullock was his campaign manager. And when he wrote his book, President Bush said, whose dad was president, said, Bob Bullock was my biggest political influence. So they learned to work with each other and find common ground. It really sucks that people aren't with that anymore. Uh, there's some. There's still some, but very few and far between. If you ever go to Austin, you need to go see the Capitol. You need to go to the Bob Bullock Museum. If you hate museums, you'll love this. Has anybody been there? It's the one in Austin with the big star out front, huge star. Um, it's the history of Texas, and it's it's got a bunch of stuff. Like stuff. And it's not like a boring museum. There's just they have an airplane hanging, and they have an old um, movie house neon sign. I mean, just they have a bunch of stuff from Texas, and a bunch. Of, it goes through the timeline of. Caveman to today, and it's really, it's really good. Too. But the lieutenant governor is is elected separately. Vice president's picked. 
What is the vice president's main day-to-day -day job? Oh, wait, the Senate. The Senate. The vice president runs the Senate. Hangs the cabinet. That's why you're autograph. What do you think the lieutenant governor's day to day job is? He's on the Texas Senate. Oh, well, they really just copycat that stuff. They really did. I guess don't fix it if it ain't broke. When Governor Bush left to become <laughs> president, Lieutenant Governor Rick Perry stepped in as governor. What's he do now? Because that means something to me. Rick Perry was governor until 2016, and then was the energy secretary for uh, Donald Trump. Right? Donald Trump, yeah. Oh, well, he's doing that. Not very retired. Yeah, um, so the Texas lieutenant governor takes the place of the governor if they need to. Vice president takes the place. So on the, on the quiz, I'll ask you how is the lieutenant governor and governor similar? I mean, lieutenant governor and vice president, how are they similar? Both run the, both run the Senate, both take the place. How are they different? One is elected and one is elected separate. And usually, history has been the last 20 years or so, whoever's lieutenant governor will become the governor. And whoever is the attorney general becomes lieutenant governor. That's the, like the last 20 year history. That's what that's how it's. Um, Dan Patrick. He's kind of a weirdo. But all we are. What, what makes him weird? Because there's like, yeah, we're all weird. No, I know. There's like weird people. He kind of gives he, he, of like weird comic books. So. I know he, he says he's conservative, Republican, but he has some, every once in a while he comes up with some out there idea. Just like crazy. Not crazy. I think he's. Nonsense. He's not trying to be good. He's not so much a Democrat. He he every once in a while, he'll try to push something through Congress, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Now, I'm not against vouchers. Some people. Are, um, oh, yeah. Vouchers is where you can take your. Like, title is in Paradise. We pay Paradise School taxes. So if we want to go to Springtown, we can take. Our tax money and use it in Springtown or at Victory or at some other place. And I, I don't necessarily mind that because it creates competition. But then you would have the people that don't like this school, so I'm going to this school. No, I don't like that school, so I don't like it. Make my kid do this, so I'm going to go to this school. All right, let's go to Commissioner of the General Land Office. All pictures. And guess what? Land office. Land. Yes. And Water. what would they need to keep track of? Land. Land. What owners? Ownership. Titles. When you buy a car, you get the title. When you pay for it. When you pay for the land, you get the title. So the land office deals with land ownership. You are buying a house, buying some land. Part of the closing costs and closing paperwork is somebody goes to the courthouse and they research and they go back to 1836 and they find who the original owner of that land was. Because like they gave out thousands of acres of land to everybody because Texas had plenty of land, no water, so you had to give out a ton of land to get a little bit of water. So you research back to make sure the person you're buying the land from actually owns it. Title search, what that is. Um, there are two things that go along with land ownership that are very important. Taxes. Okay, yeah, they don't do the tax form. What about, what's something everybody needs every day? Water. Water. I already said Texas doesn't have much water. You so, see big deep, you know. Mm -hmm. Which is like, you have to go like 200 feet deep to get a well. Yeah. Water rights are a huge thing in land ownership. Water. So, we 
buy land and so, mineral rights. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. So a lot of people out here pump oil. And some people like they want to pump on their land and they can't even like say no. Right. Because you don't own the mineral rights. Okay, here's the land, here's the water. I own this. Here's Raul. Here is Carlo. Here is Duran. Can I dig a well? Yes. Yes. And can I do I have access to that water? Whatever water I find, I get to have access to that. This water goes through Carrillo and, and uh, Durant's land, too. What if I start doing something where I'm using up tons of water? Say I'm in some business, I start, I start farming rice where you flood the fields, okay? Could that affect Carrillo and Durant? Yeah. Do I have the right to affect their water? No. No, and we should. So, Water rights concerns, water rights battles is something that the land office would have to have to look at. I don't own this water, but I have access to it. Now, like Harley said, mineral rights. Yeah, no, we had a, I don't know about this, but we had a thing when I was with my mom. Because mm -hmm. we had a pond that right. all of our animals needed yeah. for water. Yes. Right. And the guy directly who owned the property directly behind us started pumping oil basically Carolina or a pond, and it was making it to where our pond wouldn't hold water anymore. So, and the government, he had mineral rights and everything, and he even owned the mineral rights to our pond because his dad owned that, and his dad gave it to him or something like that. So, but the government actually made them quit because our water, like the water, so just water in a pond. Flip over and look at the railroad commission. We'll come back to the mineral rights. The Railroad Commission is one of the most important commissions in Texas. They are in charge of oil and gas production. That's all the power. I got you. I got you. Oil and gas production is controlled by the Railroad Commission. And it goes back to, I used to think the main reason it was because back in the 1800s, people had a lot of land in Texas. Didn't mean they were rich. They had a lot of land because they had to have water. Railroads started buying up land, hundreds of thousands of acres of land, because what did railroads need to run? Land. Tracks. Water. water. Steam engines. So every 10 miles, you had a water station. Just like now, there's gas stations all over because people need to pull over and get gas. Trains needed to pull over and get water. So every 10 miles, there's a water station. So they bought up all kinds of land so they could have access to water so they could water the, the trains. And so I always thought, well, yeah, they owned a lot of land, so a lot of the, the gold pass, I also said gold, gold, gas and oil was on their property. And that is true, but they were the ones transporting early on. So eventually they just gained control of the production of it since they were the ones that was, on. they don't own the oil and gas. They are, if you want to drill an oil well, you have to go through the railroad commission. If you have a problem with that, you go through the railroad, the railroad commission. commission. Okay. So now back to mineral rights. I bought this land. Carrillo bought this land. Durant's family has been in Texas on this property since the 1800s. They are the original family. So, they, they eventually sold some of it, but the Durant family owns the land plus the mineral rights. When you buy land, you do not buy mineral rights. Mainly because no one's going to sell you the mineral rights. So you own this, and you have access to water, but you don't own the mineral rights. Why would you not sell the mineral rights? And you could make possibly a ton of money off if if there's anything under there. And you still you don't have to pay tax on that land. Right. Why would you not buy mineral rights? 
Do we know that there's, and do we know how much it's worth? No. So what if someone came up and offered you a million dollars for your mineral rights? You, you kind of want to do it, but then you're like, well, what if it? What if I get ten million for it? If I keep it, what if I get zero for it? But I'll count my, I don't know, that, I'll count my million dollars and be completely content. Like I'm not going to be like, oh, I could have had two. But do you understand why people don't buy and sell mineral rights? Because it's really unknown. So what if you like every Like nobody has the who has it Somebody, yeah, whoever owns it, owns it. Somebody, yeah. Somebody owns it. It could be the government, it could be a city, it could be this, it could be that. After Spindletop, after the eight, after the teens. After the Spindletop. There wasn't there was such thing as mineral rights before that. Nobody really thought good. about that. Now all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, well, I own this. I'll say the land, but I'm not going to say the mineral rights. I want to keep the oil and gas here, but you can all say this land. Wait, do you get paid if you have a gas pipe? Yeah. Okay, we're going to get to that. Say, like a pipeline coming through? Yeah. Say that. Jump on me on that. You're talking to a former Texas Mineral Rights owner. My dad, I remember 20 years ago talking about he had an uncle that died and left him this land of 60 acres in Clay, the mineral rights to 60 acres in Clay County. By Henrietta. They don't own the land, they own the mineral rights. And then when he died, me and my brother shared. And we got a letter six years ago that it was going to start producing again. It was an old, old well, and they fracked it, and now it was starting to produce a little bit. And we would be getting royalty checks. And I went, oh, that means no more debt. That means we're going on vacations. I started getting fired up. They sent you like 30 cents. A couple they? months later, we got 100 bucks. Okay, okay. That's 100 bucks. Yeah. 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 A couple months later, 100 bucks. So about every two months, we get a check for 100 bucks. Like a piece? Then it got to be every three months. Then it got to be every four months. That's fine, it's 100 bucks. It ain't paying off debts. We're not going on vacations. You don't even know what they're doing. And we don't know when, we don't even know when it's it's not regular. About three years ago, we got a letter in the mail from an oil company that said we would like to purchase your mineral rights for thirty five hundred dollars. Right? Well, the increase to sat down, and we had been making at the most at the most six hundred bucks a year. At the time, thanks. At the time, we were making three, three, about three hundred bucks a year. How long would it take to make three thousand dollars if we're making three hundred bucks a year? A few years. Ten years. I talked to Christy. I said, you know, might as well do this because I don't think the next super gusher is going to be in Clay County probably gotten the most of it they're going to get. And I said, we did. And then she called my brother to say what we were doing and really to ask him, if you want, we want to give you a chance to buy it. We don't want to sell it to somebody else. But he goes, I would love to. I ain't got the money. He said, that's my kid's inheritance. <laughs> so his inheritance will be like 300 bucks a year. So, so you didn't get the 7500 we, we sold it. No. We got 3500 Did you sell this? No. Okay. So you just you sold 30 you acres of the mineral rights? Yeah, some deal. It's like whatever our share of the mineral rights. Yeah. How well that works. I don't know how that works either. But, you know, I don't know if you always told kids you don't sell the mineral rights, but I felt like that was probably a, that was a good, uh, pretty pretty good deal. That's an awesome an old well that I ain't going to produce much anymore. You didn't pay nothing for it. No, I'm just <laughs> Now, this is going to tie in with what you're talking about. You live on the land. They, I own this part of the land. If someone wants to drill for oil on my property, they have to go through me to do it. Now I can negotiate something with them. And I can say, I'll let you do this if you do this and this. 
if you pay me this or if you do this. You can negotiate. Today, though, with direction, about 20 years ago, they figured out directional drilling where if Logan wanted to drill, he could put a well here and then drill that way. And it doesn't have to be on my property. But isn't that illegal because they're draining your minerals? No, because that's not mine. He owns the mineral rights. He has the mineral rights. Now, with pipelines, we got a bunch of pipelines right here. We're building a house. We built a house in between here and Decatur. And they're putting in a, a natural gas pipeline. And they said, hey, we're putting this pipeline through. Is there anything you need? So we'd like you to redo the, the driveway. Okay. Get that done. We'll, we'll put this pipeline through here. We'll redo your driveway. We'll also give you a tap if you want. That means we can tap into that natural gas line and use the gas to do it with no cost. Ooh, Building a brand new house, we can make everything natural gas and we wouldn't have a bill. We decided not to do that. Because you don't need to use your gas. Well, what if we put everything gas and then there's no gas running through that pipeline at that point? Oh. So that's not a good idea because there's going to be times where there's no gas running through there. And there might be a time where they stop running gas through there. So because gas goes out. Like, like no. when people, whenever people quit using gas in the area, they just like turn off and yeah. they're like, I, they cut their losses like that. Yeah. So we could have done that. We did. We did get a new driveway on the deal. Nice. Redid the driveway for us. And that's what so, but you can negotiate stuff with them. But you do own that. So, but yeah, they it's their mineral rights, it's not yours. Well, what if you own the mineral rights and someone does that directional drill? You can't do that. That's, that's, that's what I was saying because I thought you were condition. talking about it like how we have no, we don't own the mineral rights. We bought this right here, but we don't own this. He owns that, yeah. And you know, when they like if you like, you know, how you have that well water down there, yeah. Like, okay, say you're, yeah, you're right, you're right, right? And that one guy's doing that directional drilling, right? You know, like, like, like the, when they start drilling and cracking and all that, it'll, like, mess up your water. Yes. Like, you'll get all kinds of nasty. And that's another railroad commission meeting. And so at that point, say you own the water rights, but not the mineral rights, but he's fracking right there, and yes. he is making your water, like, unsanitary. Catch on fire and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like, I'm like, I forgot which or something they were like having Azel was having that yeah, yeah. they had railroad commission meetings in Azel about five six years ago about because the water would come out on fire like, yeah. that's so cool that's not good it's not what's, what's it even it's, well some gases get trapped in your here's water. i used to work in the oil field for a couple summers and one day i, mean, I was 40 I, was, I knew i was like a teacher and coach and stuff i wasn't they kind of did treat me different I wasn't some 18 year old kid just trying to do that. Yeah, they knew I was like a, they treat me like a human being, not like a oil field worker. worker okay. And the guy came, he had the form, he had his hat, his hand, he was looking down. He said, so what's wrong? He, you've got a job if you want to do it. Said, sure, I'm here to work. Um, it's, it's really bad. It's really bad. It's, it's really bad. He's trying to talk me out of it. I'm like, no, I got it. I'll do it. What is it? He goes, well, I got a couple of frack tanks that I can work for you. Fracking is fracturing the rock. They pump in sand and water and chemicals, and it breaks up the rock, which releases more oil and gas. But it takes away a lot of stability from the Yes. We really don't know all the... Yeah. I can understand that fracking might not be the best thing yeah. for, the, for our planet and for us. I did want a paycheck, though. I don't um, care. Like, me not doing the job is not going to stop some other guy from doing the job. So, right. like... Like, oh, that's like saying, I'm not going to work on in a factory that produces gas cars because that causes one more warming. Like, they're not just going to hire somebody else. Right. Well, Might as well make that money, you know? Frag tanks are the, if you ever seen the old where they're drilling, it's the, they look like storage containers. They got wheels on them and they look like, they look like tractor trailers, like truck tractor trailers, but storage tanks. You got it. Here's what happens. <laughs> you go in, and they frack everything, all that stuff comes back up, and they hold it in those frack tanks, and they separate it from the gas and the oil and stuff, so you got this gunk. It's a 
a metal box about yay wide and about this plus another half, maybe even twice this. You go in through the metal top like this, there's a hole. I barely got in, not because I was too fat, but I couldn't get my shoulders in. That made me feel good. Um, you climb through the rebar, and then you're standing in about knee deep sand and gunk and chemicals. You're in a metal box in July, full of wet sand with no uh, air ventilation. Dylan, you slept for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Okay, stay with us here. Okay. Um, they give you a water hose out of this hole right here, a fire hose. The other guy has a squeegee, and there's an opening in this end at the bottom. And you're basically working all that sand and gunk outside of it, seeing it outside. It takes about 45 minutes in a metal box with wet sand and no ventilation in July. That's the worst thing I've ever done in my life. I can't, you can't breathe. It's hot. It's humid. I started spinning. We, I wondered how they dragged my lifeless body up the, up the hole there, but I survived. And I now, I have sat on a bull at a PBR event and cleaned two frack tanks. So I'm a man. Nobody can take that away from me, no matter what. <laughs> All right, just a couple more here. Wait, you sat on a bull at a PBR? I, I have ridden a bull at a PBR hill. They had the, the thing indicator, they had the big thing indicator the first time they did it, they wanted to coach from each town to come ride a steer. So I'm sitting in the field house, I look around and all those guys are okay, yeah, I will. Well, those guys are going to do it, no, that's why. So I show up, and they say, look, um, we don't have any steers. You have to ride one bull. Sign my waiver that if I die, I'm still riding this box. <laughs> well, I was next to last, and my, my bull tried to jump the shoe twice. And Tuff Hedeman, who is, do y'all know who Tuff Hedeman is? He's like the Roger Staubach of bull riders. So he's standing next to me at my gate, and the bull jumps up, and he goes, and I looked at him, and I went, he had been scared of my bull. I was like, so I started to crap my pants. And I sit down. I'm wearing Adriano Mariah's um, vest, who's an all time bull rider. He's trying to tell me something. I'm not listening. I'm just looking at the head and saying, I'm on a bull. I'm on a bull. I was sitting on a bull. Well, she's sitting there. Colt was like five. He's laughing. <laughs> Hi! He's like, Look, Daddy's getting on a bull. And, uh, I'm just sitting there, I said, okay, and they opened the shoe. Not knowing it's the last time. And turned once, and turned again, and I fell off. But I'm a man. I'm a man. You can't take that away. Uh, look up on your phone the percent of Texas government revenue that we get from the federal government. How much Texas government revenue comes from the federal government? Texas government revenue comes from the feds. That much coming from the federal government, what does the federal government get to do in Texas? They get to make us do things or not do things. We can deny it. We can say no, we won't take it. And then they're like, no, no we can't take our money. We, we won't. We won't. We can say no, but then we miss out on almost 40%. Our money. Now, we also have sales tax. That's a big chunk. And we have property taxes. There are some other taxes on other things. Um, most of y'all paid the state of Texas for something that you might have with you right now. Everything that we license. 
Hmm? License. Driver's license. Fishing license. Hut license. But these are the big two. Sales and property tax. Since I don't drive anymore, I'll just leave my license. That's good. Might be. Hmm.